Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So recently I was teaching one of my students about backend engineering, something which almost 90% of programmers in this world do. And she understood it so easily because I am such a good teacher. Well, maybe who knows? Okay. You might figure out in this video, but okay. So one week I told her to just focus on networking and she did it. And I made sure that she understand uh, Wireshark. She understand that how packet encapsulation work and she understands socket okay and she already had the idea of socket and everything and later I realized once you have this base knowledge set it up already how simple it is to learn about back-end engineering concept okay so uh, after that session I decided that I should make a video teaching you everything about uh, you know like something which almost 90% of programmers these days do so every business do it it's basically crud applications okay what is the core concept so this is the video i'm going i'm actually going to show you a project i'll create a project and show you like what everyone is doing these days and it's so minimal like i'm okay this video is going to be really educational okay so for example let's let's just talk about the basic concept like how internet is working well internet is working based on http protocol so if you look at any business, every business just do information exchange. For example, if you are using some food ordering website, in the end of the day, you are just, uh, you know, the user is, you know, giving the information what I want to eat to the company or the servers. All right. And similarly, if you look at, um, you know, e-commerce website, almost everything, banking applications, all these backend engineers, all these front end engineers, all this full stack engineering, everything just is just uh, basically data. Okay. Just exchanging data, sharing data. Of course, there are a lot of bloat around it, but we are just talking about some, you know, base, base stuff. Okay. So now the, my, my thing is that how, how all of this data exchange is happening. This is something which you need to learn. This is something which I'm going to teach in this video. So what is going on inside? So the thing which is going on inside is just HTTP protocol. All right. Now, once you understood HTTP protocol, that's it. That's all you need to know. Once you understood how to handle this protocol, you are done. Now, if you don't understand like networking concept or pack and encapsulation, you, you might not have that mindset to, to, you know, grasp the idea of protocol. Protocol is basically some set of rules. So because in the end of the day, when data goes from, you know, your uh, ethernet cable, it's just one, ones and zero, it's just some electrons. All right. And the thing is that when it receive to the other end of the server or any other computer, the computer need to follow some protocol that, you know, the starting n number of zeros should be about this or that or whatever. Okay. So on a high level, it's really hard. Okay. So, all right, let's just open some website, bugswriter.com, uh, this, uh, in the new tab. And let me just open this network tab. Now the network tab is a really good way to understand like HTTP protocol, what it does. So if I reload this page, you can see that, uh, if we click on any, so there are almost, I guess, I don't know, I, I can't count, but we got like almost 20 requests. So my server responded to all these 20 requests. And as you can see, the status is 200. So it means it was a successful response and you can see these headers. All right. So when I did make the request, these are the headers I sent. And in HTTP protocol, we got lots of headers. We got headers for uh, different, different kind of things. So here you can see that uh, we have like user agent header, which is basically telling like what browser I'm using, what platform I'm using. This is how, you know, so many applications figure out, like when you try to download some program, it automatically figure out you're running Linux, you're running windows or something. All right. And in re response, we also got headers. These headers are basically metadata and you can, uh, so, all right. So you understood, like you send the HTTP request and you, you know, got a response, uh, uh, with some response header. Okay. But what you need to learn to become a backend engineer, what is the skill which you need? Well, you need to learn how to handle these requests, how to, you know, if you get a HTTP uh, protocol, like request, how to write a program which can open that request, which can read all the request headers and, you know, make sense of it and do some programming and then response properly. All right. And we are going to like, I'm going to show you like how these things happen. So, all right. So you can see this is the response, which, which is just HTML. And this is the response header, which is a metadata, the data all about data. Okay. 
So let's just write a project, but before the project, let me teach you something which is like, okay, which is really, really interesting. So if you do this like copy value, copy a curl here and just paste it here. So this, this thing, this command, which I pasted here is totally equivalent to this browser. So browsers upload, you can make any request. You can just emulate any request from your command line. Okay. So we don't need browser in order to become a backend engineer. You just need a uh, curl or any program, which can just send that request from your computer. Now, as you can see with minus H, we are providing the same headers, which browser automatically, you know, like sent internally. All right. So we are sending like this header. We are sending this header. And if I press enter, we are going to get nothing. Why? <laughs> okay. So I, I, I don't know, like if I just do this, all right, we are getting it. I think it is encrypted or something. Write down the comments who, who, you know, experts who are watching my video. All right. So the thing is that you can make the same kind of request and you can get the output just like browsers. So when I do development, like backend engineering, I don't really, you know, like I don't really use browsers. This is like not my mindset. I always use curl command because in the end of the day, I don't care how the request is coming from, from the front end. Now let's just, uh, if you understood this concept, all right, let me create a directive, ID directive. Now let me teach you how I handle HTTP requests. Now there are plenty of ways. So for example, if you go to someone who is not a good teacher, he will teach you Node.js and he will, uh, you know, teach you this, this framework called express. Okay. Express is a framework in Node.js world, uh, which is basically used to handle HTTP requests. So why we need frameworks? Because we are not going to write like low level stuff which we are not going to write code, which is understand like HTTP protocol, which is going to make sense of these headers and all this low level stuff. We are going to use some framework to make our life simple. Now, I don't like Express because Node.js I think is a sync and I think it's not good for a beginner program, programmer to use like something like Node.js. I just like Python in my case. So I'm just going to use like Flask. You can even use Go programming. So Flask is a Python framework to handle HTTP requests. So this is what I'm going to use. So let's create a virtual environment in Python. Now it doesn't matter if you don't understand programming language, it's totally fine. Just try to understand the concepts and not the, okay, we, I need to activate the, you know, virtual environment. So just understood the concept. Don't worry about language or, you know, like all the, just understood the basic idea. So I create, uh, you know, I, if I do pip three list, me for pip two list okay so i have like this flask and some of its dependencies which comes with flask now let me just write like one main dot pi okay so from uh, now we are going to create a project by the way so just focus on this from flask import flask i can't type today i'm struggling to type since the morning i think i'm nervous I, I really want this video to be good. I want to teach you like I'm, I want to give my best here. So this is basically, I imported the flask and then I created an object app and now let's just do app dot route. So when you make a HTTP request, you also pass the, these routes. Okay. So for example, if I go to contact, so this is, this is the route. All right. So we need to handle these routes. So for example, slash is the root route or for example, example, or, you know, foobar is a route and now we need, okay, this is a decorator function. If you don't know what decorator is, forget it. So sorry about the background noise. I am living in city these days, so peace is not an option. So now what I'm doing is I'm basically, let's just give the methods. Now I will tell you what methods are in case if you want to learn like the core concept okay let me just save it and we are going to create a really nice project so stay for that uh, my html page or whatever it, this is just some response so if you don't know there is a rfc guide of http which you can read um this is the guide and it will tell you it will teach you everything but what you need to understand is that there are four ways or six ways, I guess, or more than six ways, but mainly there are like four to five ways in which you can send a HTTP request. You can either create a get request, which means you get something, some resource, some file. 
you can send a post request in which you can basically you know post the data which means like send some data so this is for receiving data get this is for sending data this is for updating data and this is for deleting data now this is something which is like um, you know standard but if you are you know dynamically writing the code here you can actually do whatever you want you don't really have to follow these rules all right this is basically uh, just uh, you know standard stuff all right so let's do it uh, let me just run it so run this example app dot run and i guess debug is equal to true so we don't really have to restart every time i uh, i think i should just open it here in dmux source and bin activate python python main dot py all right so my server is running and here let me open main dot py and this is perfectly fine let's just open one more window and here i'm going to use curl to make this request now if you understood it you understood everything so by default curl use get so i don't really have to type this but you can also give it uh, you know so it's saying 404 because this route is not programmed by us all right so i programmed to handle foobar okay so press enter and i got my html page so this is how you can handle a simple get request now you can do anything here all right like you can literally run a missile you can this is python basically you can use gpi library raspberry pis you can uh the, the sky is the limit okay creativity uh, is the limit so after this you can do some database operations you can you know restart your computer or blah 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 it doesn't matter if you restart then your program stops so keep keep that in mind now after this let me do something more all right so this is just basic get request uh, what if if i want to allow get and post both so this is how you can allow and here if let me oh shoot so one second um enter let me import request and here if request dot type i guess i'm not sure post return this is a post request so this is the response in which i'm saying like this is a post request and this is a uh, get request all right so i'm just assuming this is a get request because i just allowed like get in post so let's just run again and i'm getting an error so this type is not nothing method i think method is the right thing yeah sorry about that so yeah so as you can see this is a get request now if i change this to post this is the post request so i guess we are making progress and similarly you can have like more like you can have put and you can have delete and you can do things accordingly like if the it's post if lf request dot method you know like put and this is put request post request all right and similarly else oh else if and let's just make it else and this is a get request i'm assuming this is a request dot method is equal to delete all right so i just want to give you a really basic gist of how these things work all right so this is like delete and as you can see we are getting this is a delete request and this is a put request all right so this is how we can handle at least recognize that what kind of request we are getting which is really important on a very basic level now for example if i give some header in this request uh, for example user agent um we can have it like any any header youtube or, or you know mozilla all right and just send it now if i want to get this header value here so how can i get it request dot headers dot get user agent i think this will work so save it and press enter oh shoot um ug and here just print ug this is 
UG. All right. So this is Mozilla request. So basically, this is how you can handle headers in your, you know, like in programming terms. Okay. So we got headers in our programming language. We can recognize post, you know, and basically all these methods of HTTP. Now, one really important thing which we have to focus on, if I go to yb.me, and if I just search, for example, register, and okay, so I just want to show you, like I already told you, like everything inside is, is just curl, okay? So in real world, when people do programming, what they basically do is they ch share information, like they just send information from here and there and store it in the database and blah, blah, blah. So for example, if I just, you know, create a fake dummy account and just submit it. So I'm going to click, you know, register here. And you can see that we got, so this is the request I sent when I clicked on, you know, register. All right. And uh, again, you can always, you know, right click and copy as curl where it is, copy as curl and look this up. But first let's look at here. All right. So these are the request headers I sent. These are the response headers I received. And what I am interested in is if you see the request, we are, okay, here we are making a post request. Okay, so you can see this is the post request, all right? And if I see the request here, you can see we are sending this data, which in its natural forms look like this, all right? So this is the data which we are sending from our laptop to the server, okay? And we are getting some response, but that doesn't matter for now. So this data sending is one of the most crucial element which you need to learn and like how to handle. And many people who learn these things always, uh, you know, get confused, fail, and you know, they don't understand the HTTP protocol and they just, you know, do things on a surface level. So let me just copy this, copy as curl, and let me just paste this. So there are so many headers which, you know, might confuse you because I don't know, like you don't really need all these headers. It depends on the servers, but uh, by default, like uh, your browser sends some re like lots of headers, but this is the main part, okay? This is the meat here, data raw, okay? So this is something which I can copy and in our request, I can just paste it and let's just create a post request and get rid of this user agent, all right? So for example, I'm sending this data, making a post request to my foobar. And if I want username or, okay, this is not username. If I want this thing, no P N P user request username. All right. So how can I get it? So this is the post request. So I have to come here and you can get like username and suddenly like request dot form. And this is an, this is an list but uh, you can actually it's in this dictionary and so you can use dot get method to just get uh, you know like this value here all right if you don't use dot get uh, this is the python thing of course if you just write it like this and uh, you didn't get like basically this is more harmful because you can get key error all right but if you use get method then if something goes wrong you can you will get none instead of an error that key not found okay so this is why i promote using this all right so user name and all right so make it a f string that's it save it now if i you know just press enter uh, we are getting uh, this is a lot of request okay so my point, I, I don't know if you're able to understand or not, but basically this is everything which modern software engineers do, all right? So, sorry about all the background noise. I, I live in cities, there's nothing I can do. So for example, if I send like username, uh, bugs and password, uh, which is like secret one, two, three. And if I just press enter, so this is none request because we don't have like any username password. So let's just call it bugs and password. Okay, not bugs, sorry. Username and password is basically password. All right, so now I can do like if username is equal to bugs, you know, like uh, and password is equal to 
and password is equal to secret123 you can do something like this you are you are the right guy all right else return you are the wrong guy all right we don't need a string here so save it so now if i make this request you're a right guy but if i you know like do some little bit change in the password or anything you are the wrong guy okay so this is how you know like backend engineer uh, live their life like they spend their whole life just uh, receiving this data processing it doing stuff all right especially uh, the most you know basic level backend engineers uh, who just handle like crud basically but let's uh, this is not, not the entire thing now we are going to create um, okay let me teach you one more thing before so for example when you do YouTube okay if you go to YouTube and you just search something uh, so YouTube is bloat and hard to understand so okay let's just um, search telegram so you can see that we got this search query all right so when you use get request when you make get request all right at that time you can also send some data so we are sending data in the post request something like this right now but you can also send like data like this while making a get request uh, and we call it argument now argument is good in some cases uh, but it's not good always um, so for example telegram so argument is not good if you are sending passwords or something but it's good if you are just some search uh, you know if you just want to get something all right so how to handle that this is also really important so where is the get so this is the get section here so just remove that and it's request.args.get and uh, let's just type oh search so for example if you are searching for songs of uh, you know lana del rey so when you you know just go to youtube and search something by using these arguments we tell the back uh, you know back end like what songs you are searching for so okay so query is equal to uh this is so now you can do some database operations like getting that song or you know fetching some information db operation based on this query i'll i'll show you i'll show everything i'll teach you the all the basic we are going to create a project i i'm promising okay all right so not telegram why query okay this is query request so the whole point is that this is telegram request okay so by using get you can send some data by using post you can send some data and you don't really need browser you can just use curl to send these http protocol requests you can send headers and you can do something like you can do a lot of cool stuff like you can recognize what operating system uh someone using you can even get the ip address all right so every time you make the client make the request you can actually store the ip address into database so, and these things are used in real world everywhere okay this is like something which everyone even the person who you know are not into computers should be aware of uh, something as simple as that okay so this is how internet is working basically now let's talk about a project all right so i want to create like by using class you can do a lot of cool stuff so i want to create a simple food ordering website so how can we make this so let's just do this so you you basically get the idea um okay before this uh, let me show you one more example so for example let's just suppose we are having we are handling like something like um, some data mm, i don't know so event so there is a event in college and you just want to you know your teacher asked you to create a list basically go to every student and ask him what you know like what games she want to play what is her name or what is you know like all these basic information what class they have or how much they want to pay or donate or whatever some event okay so instead of going to everyone and just you know asking them what you want to do is you want to write a website so because you are a human being and you get tired and you might sleep but you know like while you're you know sleeping uh, they if if you have a dashboard then they can you know submit anytime they're like they can register anytime okay so register event for example 
so now what uh, we can do is this is something which i love okay this is like really cute way of uh, storing data so what you can do is you can have like um, a post request so if request dot post all right and not post uh, method is equal to post so i just want to handle like post data nothing else so post and uh, I guess we don't need it if the method is post then it's own, like we we are not allowing any other method so request dot oh, request dot form dot get and here let's just hope let's just uh, consider like okay they are they are sending name they are sending class okay not class <laughs> they are sending games what games they want to play okay so some charity event games and they are sending like donations so how much money they want to donate donate or donations all right so this is the three values now what you are going to do is so if i you know like print this print uh for example let's just print name comma games comma donations all right or donation whatever and here let's just give any garbage out doesn't matter so now here let's type like event and give the date okay this is a post request post data raw and the format is that name is equal to you know like okay luke <laughs> okay not luke duke all right oh okay name is equal to duke and and sport or uh, games is equal to chess and you know like donation is equal to uh, 100 rupees all right so this is it uh, if i press enter so we got the data here now what i used to do is if you're writing a very simple app all right just casual you know for college stuff you don't really need database even though i mean we, we just want I, I just want to teach you the basics of http protocol handling i don't want to teach you databases which most other youtubers don't do you know they always confuse noobs so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make a variable here uh for example entry this basically a submission or submission or you know you know like consent contestant all right i don't know like entry is the best so open let's just uh, write it into a file so open a file so in case if you don't know how to write read and write into a file in python it's quite simple so open a file called database.db or txt doesn't matter i am going to call it uh, csv and then you can just you know like oh comma and append into it so you can write or append so append is better uh, as file file dot write you know instead of file i i want to create the variable name db because it makes more sense so db dot write entry and let's just put a next line in the end so you know just for clarity and thanks for taking participation all right you know like call it one two three four five seven uh, for more updates all right so at least you you get the information okay and since this is a website which is running 24 7 from anywhere you know like even if you're sleeping this website is going to work for you and you can get the you know form done this is like this is why we can do payments these days without uh, the need of anyone's uh, you know presence like we we don't really have to go to bank and you know face some boomer or something so all right let's just do another example or the same example it's the same no okay so curl x post and http is no no not s http we are we are learning about http protocol not https 5000 slash uh, event and here this is pass data raw and name is equal to junkie and what else like games is equal to badminton and donation is equal to 200 all right and if i press okay open a new window go to directory so this is the white directory so i don't have any you know 
database file right now so i pro i pressed enter and thanks for taking participation call it this number for more update and now if i do ls i got a database.csv which have some information okay and imagine if someone else opened the website you know the front end which we haven't created now let's just assume we are living in a world everyone know curl and you know they are just using it so you know mario and he like to play like a jump game so okay he like to play mario <laughs> or super mario or oh fuck jump jump some some high jump game and donation is five whatever uh sorry so as you can see we are actually solving a real world problem you know we we become the back end engineer we use http protocol and actually not really like we haven't created any front end and this isn't like a complete thing so creating a front end is actually very easy so what you can do is you can create an app dot route you can basically a uh, home page of the website dev home and return the front end so html provide you some basic feature so you can send the request you can basically make this request uh through basically get um, through browser all right so let's just have like an input okay first form so form element is really important for making this request from front end and input type text and uh, I guess let's just have a placeholder placeholder is just an hint what you need to type like your name all right and that's it and oh one really important thing is name so name is basically wow in our case name is name so name is basically uh, this thing all right so the name of the data all right so ah why the colors are so rude I think there is something wrong with this way all right so just paste 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 here make it games here make it donations i guess donation and enter what game what game and how much donation all right some charity event one last thing which we also need is type submit so we need a submit button all right now flask give you some really good ways instead of writing html like this but we will explore it later so just save it uh, i mean save it and it's already running now so localhost 5000 now we can use browser all right and oh god i forgot to put like pr in the end which which makes things a little bit pretty save it rerun it rerun it and we got a form where and let's just open like network tab reload and just type like uh, what i want to type like my name is suraj uh, bugs what game i play csgo and how much donate i will donate 10 rupee only so save and you can see that we made this request at uh, event oh shit sorry about that i i did a mistake actually here in the form you need to tell where you want to send a request so i want to send a request to event route this event route all right and i also want to tell the method which is post okay so these things are important which you have to give away in your form action so because what happened right now is by default it just sends the request to the same route which actually does nothing okay because we are not handling this data in this main route okay we are actually doing nothing it's just a simple get request so now again so or bugs never revealed real name give out games like csgo how much i want to donate in submit agree now we made a request to this event route all right and as you can see that uh these are the request headers we made these are the response headers and if you see the request this is the form data which we send which looks something like this and this is like the output like the response which we get which can, you can see here and if you do right click and copy value as curl curl and just paste it here so as you can see browser is sending so much bullshit by default which you you do not necessarily you know like need to send all right so you can actually remove it and your request will work completely fine all right 
but sometimes it depends it depends on my back end programming like if i do some if else like if you're not sending like if you're not telling any user agent where you're not telling me that what uh, kind of browser you are using what operating system you are not using i am not going to you know submit uh, like make any database call or submit your data to my database all right so this can happen so uh, it depends now let's create the project okay yeah. so instead of writing things like this here what you can do is you can have this function render template and all of this code you can just you know like cut it and let's just have another tab vsp or sp i guess sp so here this is my project directory let's just create a directory templates in this templates directory i can touch uh, home.html so this is a template file and i can open it home.html enter it oh god i have to press p not this so this is a template which I am going to basically template is just an easy way of doing it. So instead of once again, let me just change the okay. So instead of having like return and then all the HTML, which is looking so ugly in my Python code, I can just use return template and then you know home dot HTML. All right, so this is going to work same. All right, like if you go here, see it's the same thing. So now what I want to do is I want to create a food ordering website. So for that, I want to create a basic, you know, page first of all. So which is going to be very simple h2, h2 or h1 doesn't matter. So bugs or oh, bugs kitchen where you don't eat bugs. <laughs> okay, I'm going to feed bugs to you. All right. So Bugs Kitchen. Now, what you can do is you can have a list here, an ordered list, of course, not unordered list. And this ordered list is going to show you the menu. So let's just have a menu. I should use, you know what? I should use Emacs at this point. So why the fuck I'm using this? <laughs> um, yt and then oh, templates home.html. Yeah, so fuck it. Let's open Emmet mode. Uh, uh, h3 i guess yeah so books kitchen let's change the customization like one second just customize themes and okay i'm getting one second yeah so let's get back yt and templates and home dot all right, so now it's looking a little bit brighter. So uh, menu, food menu, and then li, and then uh, let's have first idea like chicken. All right, hot. Ch I I don't know, like um, you know, dal bhati, some something to eat. All right, so like food, food. Okay, not food. Burger. Uh, Pizza. Okay, and you can have a code here. So code is like food code 123, food code 102, food code um you know like three three twenty whatever. So now this is my food menu, and if I save it, and if I go to my you know page, refresh it. So this is Bucks Kitchen. This is the food menu. It's a very small menu, and here down there I can have like place order order okay so this is literally a food ordering website now <laughs> okay for all right this is the, the, we can work with this let's have an HR here HR here let's an, have an um, HR here and mark you so since this is a website, it's open 24-7. All right. It's open 24-7. Order food 24-7. Order anytime. Mm. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create a, you know, like instead of name, let's have place your um, okay let's have name <laughs> um, 
like full name address address so let's uh, suppose like uh, they, we are going to have cash on delivery here so address your full address delivery address basically and what else like um yeah the code all right so uh the menu the dish code all right so this is the dish code so let's just write it down uh keep the dish code dish code in mind whatever you want to order all right hmm discord and then submit is there anything else which is important i guess no okay all right so we i can make a select here which is like a better way to send but for now i'm not going to confuse you i'm just going to show you the basic idea that how you can solve a real world problem so here instead of like name i guess name is fine yeah name is fine here we are going to have like address and address let's just change the route to order instead of this let's just order order i can do this on emacs too you know all right so here address here um dish code dish code dish code okay i need to change here to dish code Mm, let's change this to address let's change to the dish code and this is it okay you can instead of you this you can have like sqlite 2 which i'm not going to use but you know like sqlite if you understand like sql then sqlite is a very minimal database it's just a file but more sophisticated more better okay so let's just make a response here mm, which is basically thanks for ordering and then a href link which is go back so in case if you want to go back go back hmm this is fine all right so orders let's call it orders and the good thing about csv i'll tell you later like there is a good thing about csv now here in this template i need to change this to order and that's it so if i now you know refresh this page so this is my bugs kitchen website which is just a simple html and let's just have like my full name the guy who is order oh i think the phone number might be a good idea let's just add phone number too oh all right phone number because phone number is important you know how when the delivery guy arrives he need to know so here the phone phone all right address phone hmm all right so this is it so here let me type okay my name is sue all right just super first name and let's just give a random phone number and my full address is Disneyland Disneyland two two whatever and um Finland is Disneyland is present in Finland I don't know dish code let's just give this dish code and just submit this and here we got a response thanks for ordering go back and you can see our request which is basically i send this data to the server and then what server did server if you open this file here database.csv it appended it no it didn't what why didn't it appended it there is something wrong all right i got all this i got why why there is no change sorry for more noise uh oh this is orders.csv so sorry about that like let's just delete like database.csv so now you know people can order and we can get this csv we can get the data in this csv and uh, there have to be something like a csv to sheet <laughs> csv to sheet um oh god all right so i think you can use like something like okay let's make more order first uh, where is my website 
um okay miley phone again anything doesn't matter full address um like okay where where she lives sense francisco i'm not sure usa and dish she wants burger all right submit query and we got like another uh, shakira phone number i don't know all right and full number again like let's call it rainforest and forest in jungle and dish code this one submit query so we we got like three requests and as you can see we got the data now you can actually upload it on google sheets or okay let's just upload it on sheets dot google dot com i mean basically you can convert it to ah do i have like library office library office yeah i have library office i don't need like these browser stuff like discard all mm, yes okay i don't know when i last time used this thing open let's just click on yt where is yt this is the yt directory orders yeah this is what i want to show so okay i don't need tips i know cancel how to zoom in okay this is all right guys so here if i just you know cut it paste it this is okay why name this is address this is um what oh you know you should always have these um, quotes so, so it does not separate things okay let's just get rid of it all right this is the phone number and this is the what you say uh your dish dish code okay so guys this is what majority of software engineers do all right they somehow get the data from the user interface and they store it in some database so you know people can basically get that information so when you do e-commerce website when you do anything like food ordering or banking in real world everything is basically just using http handling http protocol handling and uh, you know like just exchanging information basically letting others know and the good thing about servers is servers work 24 7 without any uh, you can say that um, effort humans uh, you know he like when when in old days when people were doing the jobs uh, you know it was if they are available uh, only in the morning time then you have to go to the morning time basically you, are, you were dependent on human but now when back end engineering write some programs and you are dependent on those programs so this was the video i hope you like the project and i i know like the way i showed it is mess but you know when i teach i actually do way better all right so you know what let me do the promotion i don't really care but okay tutors.boxwriter.com but you know when you learn about http or anything like back end engineering first learn networking concept if you want you can learn under my guidance but all right so thanks for watching this video i'm going to upload it or maybe edit it who knows so